What's up fellow nerds? So exciting times. I'm starting to feel like a real grown up YouTuber because Gigabyte has sent over something special. Not one, but two 9000 series AMD Radeon GPUs, the RX 9070 XT and the RX 9070. By now we all know how popular these cards are, right? But the question is, should you get one of these bad boys into your rig? But more importantly, how's your mother? Why should you get one into your rig? Besides a little sibling rivalry between these two, I'm going to be putting them up against what I have available to benchmark against these cards so you can see if the upgrade is worthwhile to you. Spoiler alert, if you have the means, it probably most certainly definitely is. Visually, the cards are almost identical. Same shroud design, same three fan setup with Gigabyte's signature alternate spinning fan that does physics things to reduce turbulence. However, the XT definitely ate all the pies because he's a chonky boy. Com comparatively weighing more and thick. <laughs> yeah, boy. Both share the same RDNA 4 die, 16 gigs of DDR6, and a 256 bit memory bus, but their non XT has also been slimmed down under the hood with fewer compute and shading units, ROPs, RT cores, AI cores, and a good 100 watt lower TDP. And coming up from behind, like your dodgy uncle, I'm pitting these cards against some of the best GPUs from two generations ago that a lot of you might still be running. These being the AMD RX 6700 XT, 6800 XT, 6900 XT, 6950 XT, and from Team Green, the RTX 3080 10 gig model. I'll also be throwing in something a little more modern because why not? The GPU with more X's than I do, the Radeon, RX 7900 XTX. Now all of these tests will be done on my test bench with a Ryzen 5 9600X, Gigabyte B850 board, 32 gigs of Patriot DDR5, 6000 mega transfers memory, and to power it all, a 1000 watt Antec PSU. I tested all of these cards at 1440p and not 4K, specifically because even now 1080p is still the most used resolution and 1440p will be the next one so everyone is gaming at 1440p now if you're gaming at 4k this card is absolutely capable but obviously you will take a bit of a performance hit we're about to put a bunch of gpus through hell no baby settings no console equivalent nonsense this is max settings ultra ridiculous settings so high they'll make your psu call their life coach now, before we go full throttle, a quick heads up. The 6900 XT in this test is the XTX-H variant. Translation, it's not just a 6900 XT, it's a 6950 XT in a trench coat trying to sneak into a 9000 series party. So to level the playing field, I smacked 10% off its scores. You are welcome. We kick things off with Forza Horizon 5, where the XTX just muscles its way to the front like it owns the damn racetrack. The 9000 series cards are clinging to its tailpipe, screaming, wait for me! But let's be honest, this game so well optimized, you could probably run it on a baked potato and still hit 60 FPS. All the cards here perform beautifully. It's basically a GPU cuddle party at 1440p. Ah, Cyberpunk, the neon lit hellscape that turns lesser GPUs into molten regret. Turn off ray tracing and the XTX is a total unit. It charges the head while draining the local power grid. But flip that ray tracing switch and the 9000 series shows up like a Gen Z at a boomer barbecue. Smug, efficient and armed with superior RT cores, suddenly the XTX looks like it's cosplaying as a space heater. Doom, metal, ray tracing. The 9070 XT kicks the door in, guns blazing, outpacing the XTX like it owes it money. The non-XT is behind, still ripping and tearing, just with slightly less righteous fury. And the older cards, they still rock this game. But the 9000 series, they punch you directly in the corneas with crispy demon slaying frames. No ray tracing here, just raw testosterone. And guess what? The new cards edge ahead, both with and without upscaling. You will hit CPU bottlenecks, especially on the higher end GPUs. Let's be honest, if you're complaining about only getting 200 frames per second in God of War Ragnarok, you've probably already lost touch with reality. Or you benchmark for sports. Go touch grass. This one's weird. The XTX keeps the lead, but barely. Probably because the game only uses ray traced ambient occlusion, which is like dipping your toe into the RT pool instead of doing the full cannonball. Turn on upscaling and the frames per second jumps like a cat on a hot stove with barely any visual downgrade. It's black magic or just really good optimization. 
In Jedi Survivor, it's another win for the XTX, but it's sweating. Once you slap on upscaling, the lead shrinks faster than EA server uptime. Turn on ray tracing and CPU bottlenecks say, hey, remember me? Honestly, this game is the spiritual successor to How to Make a GPU Cry Part 4. Ratchet and Clank again sees the XTX pulling ahead, but, but only just. When it comes to pure raster performance, when upscaling is enabled, the gap increases considerably. But there's a good reason for that, and that's because this title allows for FSR 4, which is noticeably cleaner than FSR 3 on older gen AMD cards. So what you lose in the frame rates, you're gaining in a cleaner final image. And once upscaling is enabled and we put RT on high, the 9070 and 9070XT pull past their bigger and more expensive brother. That is damn impressive. With Indiana Jones in the great circle, there's no way to turn off ray tracing. The XTX and 9070XT are neck and neck at native 1440p, swinging whips and melting Nazis in glorious fidelity. The non-XT, yeah it's trying, missing some CUs and clock speeds but respectable. Turning on upscaling and the 9070XT finally says, get in the bin grandpa to the XTX. Even the non-XT jumps 25% by just ditching native res. Upscaling guys, it's not cheating, it's evolution. Alright, enough of these childish games and silly storylines. Now we're in EP territory. 3D Mark Port Royal is a ray tracing benchmark. The 9070XT slaps the XTX into next week. The non-XT model is right behind breathing hard and asking to be the big spoon. Honestly, these scores are amazing. You love to see it. Steel Nomad is the new time spy, I guess, and somehow the 9070XT goes full Super Saiyan and beats the XTX again, even without ray tracing. I stared at the results, reran the tests, lit a candle, thoughts and prayers, still the same. It's freaky and it's glorious. Time Spy, the old faithful. The XTX clutches the win, but by a ball hair. The 9070 holds its own, but in pure raster, even Grandpa 6950 XT can still hold its own. These cards are AMD's return back to form. The 7000 series was amazing. The 6000 series was possibly even better than that for AMD. But now, for the price they're asking for these cards, the performance you're getting, the feature set you're getting, it's, it's really wonderful to see. Right when these cards came out, I was buying my 7900 XTX and my contact at Gigabyte had told me no, buy the 9070 XT, I promise you it's better. And at that point I was like, you know what, I love the XTX, I wanted the made by AMD version, the OEM version, my heart was set. And now that I've tested these, in hindsight, did I make a mistake? Yes and no. No, because the 24 gigs of VRAM, especially when it comes to working in Premiere and After Effects, is so much better. However, yes, because the numbers speak for themselves and having worked with these cards, having benchmarked them for the past week against all these other cards, including the XTX, sure, in brute power, the XTX is faster in most cases than the XT, the 970 XT, but when it comes to newer technologies like ray tracing and FSR4, it stomps all over the XTX. For that reason, I would highly, highly recommend getting a 9070 XT. The 9070 is a wonderful card. It is, it's awesome. I absolutely love it. It's, if for the price you're paying, you're getting a lot of card. However, for that little bit extra, get the XT. The cooling on these cards is phenomenal. Gigabyte's using a new server grade thermal gel, which does a phenomenal job. This thing is currently running Superposition 4K and can't even hear it. This is how loud it is. All right? So we are paying more for these cards in South Africa because of import duties, etc. So we're paying about $900 for the XT version, which is about $150 more than you guys in the US are paying. That's just what it is when it comes to importing tech from, you know, so far away. So would I recommend these cards? Absolutely. I think you can't go wrong with either of these, especially with the 16 gigs of VRAM. You are going to be golden for the next couple of years at least. And with the rumors of the 99 XT around the corner, maybe we'll see a contender to the 5090. Wouldn't that be awesome? because those prices ah. me. So if you have an older generation GPU that you're looking to upgrade, don't overlook these guys. Both are excellent. Whatever works within your budget, go for that. Would I recommend it over the 5070 or the 5070 Ti? I've never tested one, but looking at the numbers and looking at the price, absolutely, I would choose either of these. I hope this video helped in your decision making for your next GPU. I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.